Video Lecture 3, Periodic Trends. Here we're going to look at properties and tendencies. And we can distinguish properties as metallic properties or non-metallic properties. Metallic properties would be properties that most often were occurred with metals, whereas non-metal Non-metallic properties would be most closely associated with non-metal elements. Metallic properties tend to increase as we move left and down on the periodic table. So as we move left, which makes sense because as we move left, the metals tend to be over here and the non-metals over here. Some of the things that metallic properties are based on is the ability to lose electrons or become a cation. Remember, we'll talk more about cations a little bit later, but this is an atom that loses electrons. Non-metallic properties tend to increase as we move to the right on the periodic table, which again makes sense because we have metals on the left and non-metals on the right. They, act, they also increase as we move up the periodic table. This is based on the ability to gain electrons or to become an anion Atomic characteristics vary systematically as we move throughout the table. Some of the, some of these changes that we'll see is in atomic size, ion size, ionization energy and electron affinity. These are often caused by electromagnetic forces. The nucleus is positively charged and the electrons are negatively charged. The result of this is attraction. The attraction that exists between the positively and negatively charged parts of the atom. The more protons and the more electrons we have, the stronger the forces pull that are that are pulling on the electrons towards the nucleus. This is often called electron shielding and is caused by the inner electrons, the inner electron shells shielding the valence electrons from the attraction of the nucleus, allowing the valence electrons to move further from the nucleus. Electron shielding increases as we go down a group and this should make sense. All three of these atoms are in all three of these atoms are in the same period. Here, the outermost electron is very close to the nucleus. Here, that outermost electron is farther away. The lithium atom, because it has a second energy level, will shield our valence electron. Now, our sodium atom is even farther. We have an increased shielding effect as we have the first energy level and the second energy level all working against that pull of attra that pull of attraction one of our first periodic trends we're going to look at is atomic size now what do we notice about atomic size if you look in period 2 we see that atomic size decreases as we move across. Atomic size increases as we move down the period. And we can see steady decreases in all of our in all of our periods. Atoms tend to get smaller across a period as the nuclear charge increases. So we see the positive 11 versus the positive 12. We have more protons. We have more protons, more electrons. So we'll see an increase in that attraction, and we'll see that we'll see that the atom is actually slightly smaller. Atoms get larger down a group when energy levels are added. And this is because the distance from the nucleus is important is more important than increasing the nuclear charge. It's very easy to see that here we have a nice small distance. We get slightly bigger in the lithium atom and get very large in the sodium. 
Similarly, we can look at the ionic size, the size of the ions. Ions tend to be smaller when atoms lose electrons. So these are the cations. These are so metal ions are going to be smaller than nonmetal ions. When we talk about nonmetals, nonmetals are anions they tend to be larger ionization energy is the energy that's required to remove one of the electrons and it's a measure of how strongly an atom holds on to its outermost electrons Ionization energy decreases as we move down the group and increases as we move from the left to the right. Now, if we go back, if we go back to look at our atomic size, it should make sense. Here, our outermost electrons are very close. So we can hold so the atom can hold on to the electrons with a great deal of energy. But the farther away that valence shell gets, the harder it is for the atom to hold on to it. This would take little energy to remove an electron sitting all the way out here. And as those if we look within the same period, sodium's electron is all the way out here, but chlorine in the same, those valence, shell, those valence electrons are much closer. The closer to the nucleus they are, the more energy it's going to take to remove an electron. I like to equate this sometimes with football. When we see a running back running with a ball, notice that he's got the ball tightly secured in his hand. It's going to take a lot of effort for somebody to come through and try to strip the ball and knock the ball out. It's going to take a high amount of energy. It's going to take a high amount of energy because it's close to the body. But now, if we start to move that ball a little bit farther away from the body, Notice that it's not tucked up here. It's not covered as well. Our defenders can come through, knock the ball out with less energy because the ball isn't as close. So thirdly, if we have the ball all the way out here, there's a great distance between the center of the body and where he's carrying the ball. So the, okay, this defender is going to try to knock the ball out, and this is going to take the least amount of energy. Because it's so far away. Because it's so far away. Our first ionization energy is the energy needed to remove the first electron. So here we see our atom plus energy. This is our ionization energy. Will lead to a cation, the positive charge, and a free electron because it was removed from our initial atom. If we look at the ionization that occurs within magnesium, we see a small amount of energy needed to remove the first electron. In fact, we see 738 kilojoules of energy. The second ionization energy is slightly higher, but it is higher. 
738 to 1450. The second ionization energy is higher than the first. If we were to go through to the third ionization energy, we see it even higher, 7,733 kilojoules, in order to make a magnesium plus 3 ion. Electron affinity is the energy change associated with the addition of an electron. So we're adding electrons. Affinity tends to increase across a period and decrease as you go down a group. So affinity increases and decreases as we move down. Electrons further away from the nucleus experience less nuclear attraction. So since they experience less n nuclear attraction, we're going to have a lower affinity. There's some irregularities due to repulsive forces in, the, in relatively small p orbitals. So this is talking about in our p sublevel. If we have our p orbitals that tend to be a little bit smaller, we'll see some, some irregularities. Generally, generally, the trend in electron affinity is related to how many electrons are needed to fill an energy level. However, nonmetals have a high electron affinity. They have a high electron affinity because they need a small number of electrons to fill their octet. Metals have a low electron affinity because they need many electrons. Noble gases have the lowest electron affinity. This is because they need no electrons needed. So here's what we see with electron affinity. We see an atom gaining an electron. We see the negatively charged anion and energy. Electronegativity is a measure of the ability of an atom in a, chem in a compound to attract electrons. So that's going to be your key, is that this is in compound. Electronegativity tends to increase across a period and decrease down a group. This is going to be one of the easier ones to track because if we look at our cell in the periodic table, this bottom number on our periodic table is the electronegativity. So we can look and easily see the trends as, as they go. We see as we move from left to right, those electronegativities tend to increase. They go from 1.0 to 4.0. If we look at period 4, it starts at 0.8 and grows to 2.8. So we see an increasing in that, ele in that electronegativity. If we look at our groups, if we look at our alkali metals, we start at the bottom at 0.7 and increase up a group to 2.1. The most electronegative element on the periodic table is fluorine at 4.0. So we have some general trends of periodic table. Hydrogen is a unique element and can be considered a family unto itself mostly because it can react by losing electrons, like metals. It can gain electrons, like nonmetals. It can share electrons, as it exists normally, and it can also form bridges with other hydrogen atoms. We call those hydrogen bonds. Now, chemical activity refers to how active or how readily metals and nonmetals will react. Active metals react by forming cations. 
the most reactive metals or the most active metals are those which can easily lose an electron. So if we remember from our last video lecture, these are most often our alkali metals. Our active metals, or our active nonmetals, are going to react by forming anions. The most active nonmetals tend to be the ones that gain electrons. If you remember from our last video lecture, though, that would be the halogen family. So our active metals are going to have a low ionization energy, while active nonmetals will have a high ionization energy. We're going to have a low electronegativity, and if it's an active metal, active nonmetals are going to have a high electronegativity. And finally, we're going to see a low electron affinity and a high electron, electron affinity in our active nonmetals.